Hey everyone, and welcome to my August tier rank wrap up. If you don't know what my tier rank wrap ups are, I'll leave a link up above to my original video where I do the full explanation, but it is essentially where I take all of the books I've read in the previous month and I tier rank them. These were my stats for August, so as you can see I did pretty damn well on reading comics because it was the graphics-a-thon and then I was also doing a 30 graphic novels in 30 days challenge. The books, not so good, but I did have one five star read and a new favourite, so it's not all too bad, so let's get into talking about exactly what I read. I'm going to start with the books and then go on to the comics in case anybody just doesn't really um, like care about comics or anything, and the first book I managed to read was Binti Home by Nnedi Okorafor. This is the second one in the Binti series, which is an Afrofuturistic um, sci-fi series, and this was quite fun. I will say that once again, the um, maths went completely and utterly over my head. I am not smart enough to understand the maths of this series or anything of that just completely and utterly bypassed me. Um, but I did really enjoy the family dynamics of this one and the explanation around um, various different parts of this world. This kind of Thing, but overall it was just an alright read. I wouldn't say it was my absolute favourite in the world. There were bits that I really really enjoyed, other bits I didn't and I gave it three stars in the end. I then read the third book in the Murderbot series, Rogue Protocol. I will say that this was a reread because I listened to this audibly in February? Something like that. It was a very long time ago anyway um, in terms of this year and I had completely forgotten what had happened in it so I couldn't really continue on with the series without rereading this one. So what I did was reread this one physically instead um, via the library and once again it did not completely stick in my head. I do know that I still really enjoyed Murderbot Sass because they are very much me in the sense that they do not want to be talking to people or dealing with people. All they want to be doing is watching TV and reading things in peace and never getting it. I just I feel that so deeply in my soul <laughs> to say the least. So I still really enjoyed Murderbot's character. I really really enjoyed as well seeing um, like more of this mystery unravel. The action scenes were great. The ending was still not okay um, in terms of what happened at the end. If you've read it you know exactly what I mean. Um, but overall I did have a good time with this um, even if I can't remember it that well. I'm sure it will come to me again when I'm reading the next book and I'm giving it four stars. Then I read Merciless Saviors. This is by H.E. Edgman and is the sequel to Godly Heathens and this was essentially about morally grey teenagers who turn out to be reincarnated gods from another universe trying to essentially kill each other and get back home again and this was so much fun. I had so much fun reading this. I always do when it comes to this series because it's got all of the morally grey trying to kill each other vibes that I absolutely love reading about but this time I also really loved um, exploring more of the world of this and the world these gods came from. I really really enjoyed all of those elements of it. I really like the twists and turns of it. All of this kind of thing I will say if you are planning on reading this though definitely check out the trigger warnings because there are a lot of them. Obviously I've put them here but make sure to read them and check them all out because there are a lot of triggering subjects in here including mentions of child sexual assault and things like this so there is a lot of that kind of thing going on throughout here it's never actually on page but it is mentioned and discussed a lot throughout this book so just be warned um, if you're going to read this one there is a lot of that kind of thing in here or like discussions of that kind of thing in here so just be warned about that but Anyway, um, I really, really loved the world of this. Like I said, I really enjoyed the twists and turns. I will say I was reading this in the middle of a heat wave in England and it melted my brain so some scenes didn't quite make sense and I was a little bit sort of like, wait, what's going on here? So I was a little bit confused um, in a few places and I'm not entirely sure. I fully understood the ending, but overall it was a really good time. I'm definitely going to be checking out H.E. Edgeman's other work if they've got any because I had a really good time with this and it is getting four stars because it was really good fun to read. Then there was Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong and this was my favourite book of the month. This was the five star read, spoiler alert, but this was the five star read because this was in incredible this is a thriller which is not usually my thing whatsoever but i love this one in this one we are following um juniper who is a um, struggling author and she steals the work of a chinese author who is much more successful than she is when that chinese author dies she passes it off as her own and not only that she also makes herself racially ambiguous with her name and this kind of thing and it all goes from there and it's dealing with the consequences of that and people trying to um uncover her 
all of this kind of thing and it was incredible the conversations it had around racism about microaggressions all of this kind of thing was absolutely brilliant to read and so cleverly done i also really uh, loved hearing more about the publishing side of things because that is not something i really have any sort of knowledge in so that was really really fascinating and this whole book felt like watching a train wreck in slow motion in the best way possible as I was watching Juniper just spiral and make things worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and just keep on digging that hole further and further and further and further and further and not learning from her mistakes or anything else and just doubling down on what she was doing and all of this kind of thing. It was absolutely genius i absolutely love rf kong's work now this is the second thing i've read of this because i've also read babel and really really enjoyed it i am definitely going to be reading their poppy war trilogy as well i don't own it yet but i will definitely be reading that at some point and this was a solid five star read i did not want to put it down it was in incredible i highly recommend it even if you are not a thriller reader or anything else check this book out it is incredible and then the final thing i managed to read that was a book was little thief this is by margaret owen and this is a goose girl retelling set in a um, german inspired world and there's a lot of gods and the girl that we are following who swapped with the princess is actually the adopted daughter of um fortune and death which was really really interesting i really liked that element of this um i also really liked her as a character i like the heist elements of it i like the world of this as well i found that really really fascinating but what i will say is that the romance did not do it for me i found the romance quite frankly quite unnecessary in a lot of ways and i was just like didn't really need this but that could just be me being really really cynical about romance and this kind of thing so that could just be me i'll put my hands up and say it's probably a me thing but the romance didn't really do it for me and i found it quite unnecessary but i did enjoy the rest of it and i'm giving it four stars because it was fun the world was great and everything else i just really if it stops clicking about there i just really did not like the romance element of it and then absolutely everything else is comics and as always if I've read more than one comic within a series I'm going to be talking about the series as a whole. So the first thing I'm going to be mentioning is obviously Trials of X, specifically Trials of X volumes 10, 11, 12, then also Sabretooth and the Exiles and also X-Men because it's all part of the um, Krakoan era so it's easy enough to just sort of talk about them as a whole and I really really enjoy Trials of X. We know this about me, I've been working through them diligently for the last like two years I think it is and I have finally caught up with Trials of X and now I'm going through into what should have been Destiny of X but never actually got those bind ups so anyway these were really really fun I really really enjoyed the um, Devil's Reign part of this which um, dealt with Emma Frost and her time working for Kingpin that was fantastic I also really really enjoyed all of the Sabretooth stuff hence why I continued on with it because he's been sort of plotting against Krakoa this whole time that was really fun and seeing him with his exiles i really really enjoyed that and seeing the start of the orcus storyline that was fantastic i also really enjoyed the x-men part of this as well because that was talking more about how they have essentially conquered death and they're trying to hide that from humans and also dealing with the fact that scott has publicly died but then they're trying to keep him out there and stuff like this so he can carry on being a superhero while hiding the fact that he's still alive all of this kind of thing all of that was absolutely fantastic and i really really enjoyed all of these issues and i'm giving them a solid four stars each because they were all a really good good fun time and I cannot wait to continue them. I also read Garlic and the Vampire. This is by Brie Paulson and this is about a witch who has essentially got this garden. She has grown a whole load of vegetables and some of them are sentient and then one day they realise that across the um, forest a vampire has moved into the local castle and they immediately assume that the vampire is bad news and they send Garlic over to essentially sort him out in the way garlic sorts out vampires traditionally and they soon learn that actually he's not a bad guy and they learn to work together this kind of thing and this was quite fun it was quite sweet i did like the artwork this kind of thing but it's not gonna sort of stick in my head that much um and i probably won't be continuing on with the series just because it's not usually the type of thing i read i am glad i read it but it was only a three star it's definitely a good one though if you are looking for middle grade graphic novels that talk about prejudice and 
and not um, like believing everything you hear about a certain type of people before you've met them. This kind of thing is a great way to start off that conversation, maybe with younger readers, this kind of thing, but it's not going to be something that's going to stick in my head for that long. Black Hammer Volume 2, the event was absolutely brilliant. This is by Jeff Lemire and this is following a group of superheroes who 10 years ago went missing in battle and it turns out for the last 10 years they've been stuck in a um, tiny little rural village that they can't leave, they can't get any messages out, this kind of thing. And we're following these characters as they're trying not to give up, trying to make the best of um, the situation they're in, this kind of thing. And it was really, really enjoyable. I still really, really enjoy these superheroes and seeing their stories and how each of them are being affected by being stuck here. I love exploring more of um, their backstories and what happened to them in the past. This kind of thing, the artwork was absolutely brilliant. I actually talk about this more in a vlog that I'll leave a link to up above. Um, because I went through and read a lot of these in a day and vlogged the experience. I actually vlogged the entire month so I'll be linking those up above the whole way through this video but I did really really enjoy this one and I'm giving it four stars because I had a really good time with it and it's definitely one of my favourite non-Marvel comics that I'm currently reading right now. Then there was Misha the Bad Demon. This is by Michelle Lamb and this is another middle grade that deals a lot with prejudice and not um, judging people by what you've heard about them. This kind of thing. This one is specifically about Mish who is a very very bad demon in the sense that she can't breathe fire, she's not very good at being a traditional demon in any form whatsoever and she'd much rather be watching TV about fairies and her idol is a fairy, this kind of thing and then one day she actually has to go to the fairy land to try and save her people because everyone's starting to turn to stone and this was a really sweet, really fun middle grade. I really really enjoyed everything it had to say about prejudice and not um, like judging people this kind of thing the artwork was really really sweet as well and generally it was a really good time and I'm giving it four stars then I read Sweet Tooth by Jeff Lemire and this is following Gus who is our main character as you can see here and he is a hybrid child which means he is part deer and there is a lot of hybrid children now after a pandemic has essentially devastated the human race and there's a lot of kids who've been born with various different animal characteristics be that like antlers and ears or like pig noses and pig tails part hedgehog this kind of thing and we're following Gus after he has just lost his father and he's trying to fend for himself and then one day a human man comes along and says I can take you to a sanctuary which is filled with other kids like you so you don't have to be lonely anymore and we're following the two of them as they're going out into the real world for the very first time in Gus's case and learning about the real world um, and the dangers that are surrounding him and this kind of thing and I will say that this would have been good if I hadn't have watched the TV show first but I've watched the entire TV show and I love the TV show. I know this is an unpopular opinion but I genuinely think the TV show is slightly better because I just prefer the characters of it. I enjoy it where the storyline goes because it does slightly diverge from where um, the comics go. It's like um, the human man who's with Gus is a slightly different character in terms of his motivations and what he's doing. This kind of thing. And I just prefer him a lot more in the TV show. I prefer Gus a lot more in the TV show. And I will say as well that the artwork just didn't really do it for me. I will say that the story is still really really interesting but the TV show just kind of ruined it for me because I knew what was coming and I knew the basic storyline and this kind of thing so in the end I am only going to be giving this a three stars it probably would have been a four um, if I had read this before I watched the TV show but because the TV show kind of spoiled me first is only getting a three because I just prefer the TV show I'm not gonna lie I just prefer the TV show. Then there was I Think Our Son Is Gay Volume 2 and this was such a wonderful manga. This is by Akura and this is following a mum who is just uh, going about her daily life and thinking about her son and things like this and going I think he may be gay and just talking about how much she loves him and she just wants the best for him at all times um, and no matter what his sexuality is, whether he gets a partner, whether he doesn't, um, who his friends are, all of this kind of thing, she just wants the absolute best best for him and she's just talking about how much she absolutely adores him and I 
adored this once again. This time we are also talking about internalised homophobia and unlearning that. This kind of thing which I think is a really really important topic to talk about and I loved this it was just it was just a hug it just felt like such a hug to read it sounded like the first volume did it reminds me a little bit of Heartstopper but instead we're looking at this more from the parent point of view and the parents just absolutely adoring their child essentially and I just think it is such a warm hug and so much fun I am giving it four stars I had a great time reading this then I finished out the Deadpool by Jerry Duggan run that I started last month and these were quite fun I really enjoyed seeing more of um, um, Wade interacting with everybody and working with S.H.I.E.L.D. or kind of working with S.H.I.E.L.D. and sort of wrapping up all of those storylines. I won't go into it because obviously this is a larger series that I don't want to give spoilers for in case anyone wants to read it but I did really really enjoy those bits. I enjoyed seeing more of Wade's outlook on life, this kind of thing. Um, I will say that there is a bunch of short stories throughout here though that just didn't really work for me because um, they just sort of didn't really hit as hard as the rest of it and a lot of them were done by a lot of various different authors and some of them were incredibly sexist of the level of um, the Lady Deadpool stuff because it was done by the same guy and it was that level of sexism again that I just really didn't enjoy. Um, but overall the stuff by Jerry Duggan I really liked. Everything else was a little bit iffy. But overall I am giving the series four stars because it was a good time. It was pure Deadpool. I really enjoyed the character dynamics like I said and the storyline and everything else and it definitely deserves a four star. Then I read the entire of the Empire event and this is essentially the culmination of the Kree Scroll War that has been raging in Marvel Comics for well since forever it's also what you see in the Captain Marvel movie the Marvels also and then also Secret Invasion so it's the culmination of that war and it is centering around Billy and Teddy who are um, a couple and it turns out Teddy is actually the rightful ruler of both of these um, like warring races because he is the son of the best Kree um, like hero and then he is also the son of the empress of the scroll so he is their rightful um like ruler and he's joined them together and now they're going after another race called the kotati who are also trying to go after earth and we're following them as they're dealing with this as the avengers the x-men the fantastic four and literally everyone else is all getting involved in this because it is a massive massive war and this was so much fun and i so regret not reading this earlier because i had a great time reading this i really enjoyed seeing billy and teddy's relationship grow i love their wedding like that's not a spoiler this has been out for several years and it is well known that they are married and they got married during this event they had two weddings both of them were absolutely perfect. I loved their wedding so much. I loved exploring more of their relationship. That was all brilliant. I really enjoyed seeing it as well the Fantastic Four's um, like part in this and seeing everybody else getting involved. But my favourite part was probably the X-Men. Because the X-Men bit ended up turning into alien plants versus mutant zombies. And that was bonkers beyond belief but so much fun i really really enjoyed these ones um i will say that i did want more doctor strange because he wasn't really in this but everything else was so much fun i so regret not reading this earlier and it is getting a solid four stars because it was a such a good time i then read two alien comics both were by philip kennedy johnson because i saw alien romulus this month and these were Alright, I will say they're very much like your classic alien movie just in comic book format, which was fun. They weren't like my favourite thing in the world. I'm not going to go back and reread them. I'm probably not going to read any more alien comics themselves or anything else. Um, but they were a fun time. I did reasonably enjoy reading them, but they're not really going to stick in my head, so three stars. Then I read Love Sickness by Junji Ito, and this may be my first Junji Ito, but it's not going to be my last, because my god was this good. This is a collection of short manga stories, all of them are horror, or a good 99% of them are horror, and they are just so good. They were so, so original, I really, really enjoyed them. What they did with just black and white was absolutely incredible, what they did with just um, short stories was also incredible, I really, really enjoyed the beauty beautiful boy in the crossroads story, the rib woman, the one about the um, boy who um, essentially is in constant pain and is transferred to the rest of the house. So now the house is in pain and everybody else within the house also can feel that pain and is making them sick. All of this kind of thing was so so fascinating, so so good. I will say that the final story kind of ruined it for me because I was a little bit like 
why is this here? This didn't need to be here. This isn't a horror story. It's just random and kind of gross. So in that sense, um, that kind of uh, like let this down. But overall, this was so so good like i said it was my first junji ito but it is not going to be my last because that was fantastic i also read squire this is by nadia shamas and this was also really really good this is a um fantasy story and once again we are talking about um colonization propaganda learning against that this kind of thing and it is very very timely considering everything going on in palestine right now i will have links down below to where you can donate and learn more this kind of thing so please do go check them out all of that is in the description box below um but this story itself was really really well done i will say that i do wish that the ending had been a little bit longer because it just kind of rushed the ending quite a lot so i would have liked that to have been explored a little bit more maybe over like 10 or so more pages just to give it that time to breathe but overall this story was really really well done i really really enjoyed what it had to say again this is a great one to read maybe with like um, teenagers or something so they can learn more about um, like colonization what it means propaganda learning against that all of this kind of thing and I'm giving it four stars I then read James Tinian's Wind this was the first book in a series and oh my god this is not going to be my last one in the series because James Tinian is incredible I love James Tinian's work um, I've read most of his horror now I never read any of his fantasy this was my first one that was a straight up fantasy and this was so so good again we are actually dealing with prejudice and talking about um, like xenophobia and xenophobic actions and trying to fight against that all of this kind of thing in this fantasy world and I really really enjoyed it I loved as well that this was actually a queer normative world as well I found that really fun I really like the character the artwork everything else it is getting four stars because i love this one i i mean james tillian is very very quickly becoming one of my favorite comic book authors because his work is so good it doesn't matter if it's a fantasy if it's a horror it is just so good i highly recommend it then there was the dead boy detective this is by toby lit and this is following charles and edwin they are both ghosts um at 12 years old and they are now the dead boy detectives and they go around essentially solving ghostly cases and helping out ghosts in this one specifically they're also teaming up with a young girl who is alive called crystal palace and essentially they are trying to save other students from the school where charles and edwin died because a lot of ghostly demonic things are happening and children are uh, dying in the school stills and this was a reasonable time i will say it was a little bit childish because it's definitely written from the perspective of 12 year olds because child uh, charles and edwin are 12 at this point and they still have 12 your old brain so a lot of it is quite childish in that sense and it was a little bit too childish for me i would also say that the case is wrapped up really really quickly and you didn't really get any sort of time to sort of sit with them or work it out for yourself this kind of thing um i will say though that it was quite fun if you are a fan of the tv show that has now been cancelled by netflix because they keep on cancelling queer shows but there we go i'm not going there um i should say that the books are not queer the tv show is um but anyway it is an interesting one to read if you are interested in finding out more about the um charles and edwin of the comics without um supporting the original sandman comics because of obviously the allegations um that i'm not going to go to into either but Anyway, if you do want to read more about them without supporting that author, you can read the Toby Lich one because it will deal with Charles and Edwin, the school they um, ended up dying in, as well as Crystal Palace, this kind of thing. But in the end, I am only giving it three stars because it was a reasonable read, but it was not my absolute favourite in the end. Then I read Melissa Floor's Dead Lucky Volume 2 and this was a good one. I will say this one wrapped up their storyline and it wrapped things up a little bit quickly. I would have liked to have explored things a little bit more but overall this was a good one. It's not going to stick in my brain that much but I did have a good time with it and I'm giving it a sort of 3.5 stars I think in the end because like I said it's not going to stick in my brain that much but it was a good time and I do wish it had been a little bit longer. When I arrived at the castle by Emily Carroll this was weird to say the least this was a gothic um very short graphic novel um all about a sort of cat girl kind of thing going to a castle where a vampire is and it all goes from there and it was very very weird and very very creepy I did like the um color palette and the art style because it was entirely in black and white and red which was very very effective but I'm not entirely sure what just happened 
that's how I'm going to put it. I've got no idea what quite happened. So in the end, this is only getting a 3.5 stars as well because I was just a little bit confused. And personally, I like having a little bit more sort of solid understanding of what's going on in my book. So that's why it's only getting a 3.5. It was definitely interesting, but not my favourite thing in the world to read. And then finally, I read The Promised Neverland Volume 7 after three years of waiting for the next one to come through from my library. It finally happened, and I really, really enjoyed this one. This is following a bunch of kids who have been raised in a sort of orphanage kind of thing, um, and they're told that the world outside is very very dangerous and it's a wasteland and this kind of thing and then they're actually finding out that they're being raised to the slaughter for demons and we're following the older kids as they've escaped they're trying to find out what's going on and trying to um, like save the younger kids and try to keep safe from the demons that are hunting them down all of this kind of thing and I really really enjoyed this one again I like the artwork of it I liked how these kids are really really sort of self-sufficient in their ways I really like their determination I really like discovering a um, person who has been out in the wilderness for several years now and finding out more about him in its own way and generally this was really good fun and I'm really really hoping that the library doesn't take another three years to get the next one in because I really really like this one and I really need to know what's going to happen next because it's ended on a bit of a cliffhanger and I'm giving it four stars. And that is absolutely everything I have read in the month of August. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, tell me your favourite thing you read in August. I'd love to know. Or if you don't have that much time, leave me, I'm going to say, a vampire emoji down below to let me know that you were here. I'll also leave a link as well down below to all my social media fun to check it out, including to the Comic Book Sanctum, which is my website dedicated to Marvel Comics if you want to check that out. All if books are more your thing, I'll also leave a link as well down below to my bookish Etsy store if you want to treat yourself to something bookish today or if you just want to see any more of my videos please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video but until next time everyone bye <laughs>